Great. Everybody, welcome to the live stream. So uh, just like the thumbnail and title suggest, looks like El Salvador Bitcoin bonds could potentially uh, be in trouble. And this is what uh, some news reports might uh, have you believe. But in all actuality, it's not a really big thing. And why uh, this right now, as far as reporting, we really have to get these things right. Also, I want to take a look at uh, how India is potentially going to be taxing cryptocurrency investors at a flat 30% rate. Ouch. And then also we'll take a look at how Malaysia minister wants to make Bitcoin legal tender. That's pretty good news. And finally, we'll go over a story which has been trotted out uh, quite a bit. Goldman Sachs changes their tune yet again. So we'll get into all those things. And then uh, at the very end, we'll do uh, five questions in five minutes, a little Q&A. But first, let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So also, first of all, if you're here for the live stream, welcome. Usually I do this pretty early, but today we're getting things ready because we're uh, moving or not moving. We're uh, going back to Texas for a little bit. So we'll be out of Puerto Rico for a bit, just kind of moving things around, family stuff to do and all that good stuff. So today was a little bit uh, one of those off days, but here we are talking about what's going on in crypto. So just so you know, if you're here for the live stream, thanks for coming by. If you're here for the recording, just check out the timestamps below. Uh, you can go fast forward or whatever you want to do to the stories you want to uh, listen to. And at the very end, we'll do the Q&A. News takes about 15 or 20 minutes. Q&A takes about five minutes. Let's jump into what is going on with the market. So I'm not going to spend a whole great deal of time. It's pretty much sideways. This, is, oh, this can't be right. Let me refresh this. 1.941. And now it's... BC game. Let me show the stats. Ah, 1.95. Wow. Went from 1.941 to 1.947. That's boring. Bitcoin is down a little bit. Ethereum's up a little bit. XRP's up. Hey, watch out. 3%. Terra's up. Damn, 6%. It's pretty good. 3.7, 0 0.6. And some other stuff aren't doing so good. Bitcoin Cash. Watch out. 5.8. Algorand finally coming, uh, making, making around the corner 7.8%. So, Things are going off pretty well. That's the market. You know what it is because you check all the time. Let's jump into it, the story, El Salvador and Bitcoin bonds. So the when I was reading these stories, I, I kept getting conflicting information about what is going on with these Bitcoin bonds from El Salvador, why they're actually being issued, who is actually going to uh, issue them, and how it's actually going to play out as far as wh who is going to spend what money. And when I take a look at these types of stories, I think it's important that we get these things right. And there was another thing that I, I had taken a look at, which you know made me off the realization that if we don't get things right, things can go uh, sideways quick, because it's all about the narrative, right? It's all about the narrative that is pushed. And I'm not a mainstream media guy. I used to watch a lot of news, but that's just bad for your brain. And then there's a lot of lies out there. But one thing that I can, I think we can all agree on is that if you don't get the full picture, it's not going to do too much for you. So this was a poll by Yahoo News and YouGov. And they said, hey, and they just asked Americans, hey, do you support a no-fly zone over Ukraine? And if they just said that, would do, do you support a no-fly zone over Ukraine? Uh, you had 40% said, yeah, 35% uh, were like, yeah, maybe. And then 25, like a quarter were like, no. But then when you give them the full story, like, hey, would you support or oppose a no-fly zone over Ukraine, which would mean the U.S. would shoot down Russian military planes that they went into that zone and possibly trigger a war between the U.S. and Russia. Once they gave, got the whole story, then they're like, wait, what? No, I'm not going to do that. 43% said no, 34% not sure, and then support pretty much flip-flopped from what it was before. And then I see these same types of narratives in mainstream media right now. Like when we talk about inflation, I just saw President Joe Biden roll out and say, inflation is not because of Federal Reserve and us printing money. It's all about the supply chain and it's all about GDP. It has nothing to do with money, with us printing the most amount of money in the last two years we've ever done. And then, of course, you see these narratives about like, well, you can fight inflation by don't take the bus, don't buy in bulk, don't eat meat, try lentils. And of course, you got to do your part. And then you hear these things like coming off like this is what we have to do. And it's like a brainwash type of thing. So I'm just trying to get the right information at the right time to the right people. That's you. So here's what's going on. The Bitcoin bond is set for baptism of fire in El Salvador. I think that's a little pretentious, but uh, whatever. So we'll go with that title. And this is what's going on. The so-called volcano bond. This is being issued by El Salvador, and it's going to be a pretty great thing, I think. Has been marketed with a 6.5% coupon and a Bitcoin dividend of 50% of the gain 
in the price of the crypto after five years. And this is where it comes down to. So what are they going to do with the money that they make? So half of the 1 billion expected proceeds from the issuance will go towards the construction of Bitcoin City. So that's half. Let me do some quick math. Half of a billion, 500 million. All right. The other 500 million will be invested directly into Bitcoin. So I think now we can appreciate like, where's this money going to? What's going to happen with this? Well, it's going to go into Bitcoin. They're going to play the long game. Uh, President Bukele is pretty much a hodler. So that's what's going to happen. And the other part's going to build, they're going to build this great Bitcoin city. Love to see how that works out. So that's good news. I think we can agree with that. This is even better news. Earlier this month, emerging market debt traders sat in on a call with Salvadoran finance minister Alejandro Zelaya. And he states, uh, or this was from uh, the people that were sitting on, they said, much to our surprise, Zelaya said he had demand for this bond of up to 1.5 billion for the Bitcoin bonds, not just 1 billion, but it looks like they are over, they are oversold. They have a lot of people who are interested in this and they can say up to 1.5 billion for the Bitcoin bonds. So that's good news as well. Great, everybody's tracking. Here's where it gets wonky. Kevin Daly, a portfolio manager and investment from Aberdeen. I don't know what that is, A-B-R-D-N. Someone tell me what that is in the comments. Uh, says this is an issue. Even so, he views the issuance as a misstep. Rating agency Fish has also added its voice to a growing chorus of warnings. It downgraded El Salvador's sovereign credit rating to triple C from a B minus, citing its use of Bitcoin's legal tender as an impediment to a possible 1.3 billion financing package from the IMF. And as you remember, the IMF came in and said, look, we don't want you to use Bitcoin. We're going to give you a loan and we're going to put you into the system. Trust us. And they're like, no, we don't trust you. We're just going to go along with Bitcoin, which is pretty ballsy. And uh, I think that is a step potentially in the right direction. So when we talk about these, this Bitcoin bond and how important it is, it really is pretty important about how it all plays out. So then to finish this up, this here is some more good news. Salvadorians are not alone in experimenting with digital currencies, according to blockchain research company Chainalysis. Latin America, along with South and Southeast Asia, account for the bulk of web traffic on crypto platforms. So the bulk of it, Vietnam, India, and Pakistan, on top of the index of global adoption. El Salvador is a case study for other developing countries that are reliant on the World Bank and the IMF for financing. So if you can take a look at the Colombias, different parts of South America, if you can also take a look at Turkey, who is in a, a rapid uh, escalation of inflation, uh, this would be something that I think all of these countries are taking a look at going, should we do this? Can we do this? Maybe we should. And then to finish up, taking inspiration from Kelly's backing of crypto, 60% of Salvadorians have digital wallets. 60% have digital wallets in a country where only about 25% of the population has bank accounts. However, as of October 20. 2021, only 4% of El Salvadorans use Bitcoin in remittance transaction. This is a poll by the Central American University. I think it's much, I think it's higher than that, but that's the poll that's been found. But again, poll is a little bit different than on-chain data. The government hopes the Lighting Network, a payment protocol designed to solve Bitcoin scalability problem, will deliver faster transactions and for the reduced cost. But I could have sworn that they were using the Lightning Network already. So I don't understand where that part comes from. It doesn't make any sense. As far as I know, Lightning Network is being used right now, and that's what's being used for remittance payments. So that's the first part. So that's kind of in the middle. Here's where it gets interesting. This was a month ago. Blockstream CSO says, let me turn this off, 500 million committed to El Salvador Bitcoin bond. This was a month ago. They had 500 million. When I take a look at this, I'm like, that's pretty bullish. I like that. But there's a story behind the story. So blockchain chief strategy officer Samson Mao said this, the bond had received more than 500 million in verbal commitments at the time he stopped counting a few weeks back. And he's talking about, I believe, the uh, El Salvador uh, prime, uh, finance minister. So verbal commitments, I must tell you, are not hard cash. I've had in, in business, I've had many verbal commitments that don't pan out. So the question is, are they going to pony up and are they going to come in? That's the big question, which leads me to my last point. Rollout of El Salvador's Bitcoin bonds facing delays. And that's never good, right? If you're an Ethereum fan, you're familiar with delays. It's okay. Same thing with Cardano. <laughs> There's delays all over the place. So if we take a look at this, this is, I think, the narratives which is going to push people around going, well, is this positive or is this negative or what's happening? In all honesty, it's neither. So here's what's happening. 
According to a new report by local publication La Prensa Grafica, even though President Nayib Bukele announced on February 22nd a series of legal reforms involving Bitcoin, the country's Congress has yet to receive the laws essential to roll out the bonds. Apparently, they cannot do that legally before this happens. Zelaya, one we just talked about before, also said the conflict between Russia and Ukraine is having an impact on the timing of the rollout. We believe that between March 15th and 20th is the right timing, and it is the 21st. We had the tools almost finished, but the international context will tell us, I didn't expect the war in Ukraine. So here's the thing. I don't care when they get it out, as long as they get it out. If they have to wait a couple of days or a week or two weeks to get this right, I don't care. I just want this to work as perfectly as it possibly can. So it takes a little bit of time. Hey, it takes a little bit of time. As long as you've got a little bit of momentum going, I think it's okay. And then according to a recent article by the Financial Times, when the legislative backlog is cleared and the bond does come out, it won't be issued by the government. It will be by Lagio, which is El Salvador's thermal energy company. And for all, all you Americans like myself, we're like, where can I get into that sweet action? Well, you can't because Americans would be unable to purchase them as U.S. traders and barred from using Bitfinex, the crypto exchange platform that would sell them. So if you're questioning like, well, how do I get into that? That's the way. And uh, I'm not going to say anything about a VPN or whatever else, but that's up for you. And this isn't financial advice. This is just financial opinion. So let me know what you think about that in the comments section. I think the narrative depending on where you go to, if you go to like a mainstream media site, you're gonna see this is awful and it's collapsing. If you're gonna see, if you're gonna to go to like a crypto site, everything's okay, everything's fine, it's gonna be fantastic. I'm just trying to give you all sides of the story so you make the best decision for yourself and investment. So I'm gonna know what you think about that. Let's move on to our next piece. Oof, this one's not good actually. India and crypto tax. So there has been a lot of back and forth. India say they're gonna ban it. The uh, their central banks, they wanted to ban it. They aren't the legislative departments. They don't make laws. They're just a bunch of bankers. And that had to actually go to the India Supreme Court, I want to say a year and a half ago, where they had to overturn uh, the ability for people to actually hold crypto. And that happened. And now there was a lot of positivity in India. And they're like, we want to accept this. And now we've got some taxation, which I have to tell you, when you, I read this article, I want you to think about all the times that people have said that crypto would be destroyed and it would, uh, the government would uh, stamp out Bitcoin and, uh, or any kind of digital asset because there's no way they're going to give up power. You have to understand it's not about power, it's about money. And if there is this much taxes to be gained, they're not going to get rid of it. They're just going to try to tax the living tar out of you. And this is what it comes down to. So India beginning April 1st, there's going to be a 30% tax will apply to all forms of virtual digital assets or crypto assets that are sold at a profit. Now, if you're from India, sound off in the comments because this is the article that I have here. I verified it a couple different places and this is the information that I have. A 1% TDS will be held back each time you sell a crypto asset. More of that in a second. The crypto tax cannot be set off against other business expenses. So like if you own a business and you're trying to find uh, expenses to reduce the amount of burden that you have as far as taxes, it doesn't work like that. It's going to be 30% straight flat. And it's pretty awful. India's finance minister has reiterated that the existence of a targeted tax does not give the crypto legal status, which is kind of funny because they'll tax you on it, but they won't say it's legal. Well, it sure is legal when you take the money out of my pocket. So from April this year, crypto gains will be taxed at 30%. Let me say that again. From April this year in India, crypto gains will be taxed at 30%, which is the highest tax bracket and the same rate as lottery winnings. This would apply to all virtual digital assets, right? From Bitcoin to NFT and related earnings. Tax, but not unrealized gains. That's the big thing. I'll get to that. Tax rate on stock trading can range from zero if you're a stock trader, to 15% if filed as a short-term capital gain, but not crypto, 30%. India is said to have almost 10 million crypto users seeing about $100 billion in trading volume in 2021. That's a lot of taxes. I'm sure the government would like to get their hands on it. So all crypto profits gained over this course of the year will be taxed at a flat 30% rate. Uh, a person who bought a crypto asset that increased in value greatly but is yet to sell it 
has made no profits yet. That will be called unrealized tax gains, and you will not be taxed on that, which is the ex exact opposite of what our Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said is what she wants to do, which was idiotic, but whatever. And then remember that thing that we I said TDS, tax deduction at source. This is the real ripper. If this ever happened in the United States, I think it would really hurt. Tax deduction at source, nibblings away at the capital. What is it? The TDS or tax deduction at source is deducted upon the entire transaction value, even if you make a loss. For example, if you bought Bitcoin worth 40,000 and sold at the same price on any profit, you'd get back only 39,600. So even if you get a loss, you still get taxed. And this is from uh, some Twitter user, sure. Uh, additional provisions that close the loophole, loopholes. Uh, persons who earn all or most of their income from crypto assets can show their earnings as business income. But guess what? No business expense deduction will be allowed upon crypto earnings. Again, you're just going get, to get straight 30%. Avoiding a 30% crypto tax and showing crypto profits as capital gains, which is taxed up 20%, will not be allowed either. So not only do they not get taxed as capital gains, they get taxes like essentially if you won the lottery, 30%, which is pretty crappy. Crypto-based prizes and gifts will also be subject to 30% flat tax. So airdrops of coins or NFT won't be free. Receiving crypto assets as a gift won't be free there with the option of deducting tax at source, which is a lot different here than in the U.S., also in parts of the EU, I believe. You can gift somebody uh, a certain amount. I think it's like seven or $8,000 per year of crypto. Don't quote me on that. Check your CPA, and it's tax-free. So if you trust your wife or your husband or your significant other, you might want to give them some big fat gifts and you won't get, uh, you know, you won't get uh, taxed. But when they sell it, they'll get taxed. So it's a, it's kind of a goofy one. And lastly, legality of crypto is not assured. Making yourself clear, India's finance minister, Nirmala Sitharaman, said even though crypto isn't regulated, it doesn't get a legal status. Again, I think it's funny that she says that because it's not legal but we're going to tax you like it's legal. The proposed framework for regulating crypto is yet to be presented in Parliament, but the finance ministry is said to be working on a consultation paper, which is expected to be released for public comments in six months. So they're going to try to figure out exactly what the legal status is. But until that time, this is what we got. Again, if you're from India, sound off in the comments because that's the information that I got. I'd like to get the whole story. Let me know what you think about that in the comments. And I will just say this. If you're from India, you should check out Puerto Rico. It's fantastic. Have you seen this place? It's great. Always sunny. Weather's always warm. They really like people around here. Super, I mean, just, and food's pretty good too. And also, uh, there's no capital gains tax. So if you want to check that out, I did a video about that. Uh, it's about 40 minutes or so. Everything you want to know is right there. Let me just think about that. Let's go on to next to last piece, Malaysia. This was pretty interesting. Uh, I always like to hear the good stuff. Malaysia should adopt crypto's legal tender real quick. This was just the, de the deputy minister of the communications and multimedia ministry said. So not like it's like the finance minister, but it's a step in the right direction. Uh, she said, or he said, so far, El Salvador is the only country to adopt Bitcoin as legal tender and with mixed success. All right. Actually, I have heard of problems with, with Bitcoin in El Salvador, people being ripped off and scams, but guess what? We get that too. I'm sure you saw a scam ad right before this video here on YouTube, and that's in America. So a survey of company, companies by its Chamber of Commerce published this month found that 14% had transacted in Bitcoin since September in El Salvador. Da, da, da. And then the communications officer is pretty much responsible for 5G mobile networks, attracting investments to the technology industry. So of course he would be into it. And then just so you know, as far as the central bank of Malaysia, they, have, they haven't announced any formal position on adopting Bitcoin as legal tender. Surprise. It is assessing whether to introduce a central bank digital currency or CBDC. So step in the right direction. Hopefully the finance minister pulls it, uh, actually says that uh, as opposed to the multimedia one. And then lastly, let's finish up with uh, I told you so, Goldman Sachs. So I love these stories. They're always so fun because uh, I get to see all the big old guard backtrack. So this was from May 27th, and Goldman Sachs, they sat all their investors down and said, hey, crypto's not an asset class, just so you know. And then fast forward to uh, March 9th, Goldman Sachs exploring offering new options for crypto. They, just about a week ago, were discussing uh, bilateral OTC options 
for some of their institutional players. And fast forward to today, it just happened. Goldman Sachs to offer over-the-counter crypto options trading. So um, that just happened. So what, what happened here, Goldman Sachs, whoops, executed its first over-the-counter crypto options trade, further step in its expansion of digital asset offering to Wall Street investors. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Oh, the bank traded a non-deliverable Bitcoin option, a derivative tied to Bitcoin's price that pays out cash. So it didn't per se uh, offer uh, Bitcoin itself, but it was a derivative and that's a step in the right direction. And who did they do that with? The transaction was facilitated by Galaxy Digital Holdings, Mike Novogratz and company. So, yeah, Mike Novogratz. So again, I like to hear stories about this. This isn't a big deal now, but if they're offering it and they're going in that direction, for their institutional uh, players. I think this is a, a good news for us. And it also, if you haven't remembered, take a stroll with me also. JP Morgan did the same thing. They were like, you know what? <clears throat> uh, we don't believe anything as far as crypto. Jamie Dimon, this was in the 2015. Virtual currency will be stopped. 2017, <laughs> JP Morgan CEO said Bitcoin is a fraud. 2018, again, Jamie Dimon says he regrets calling Bitcoin a fraud and believes in the technology behind it. Sounds like China. 2020, Jamie Dimon says Bitcoin is not my cup of tea, even as JP Morgan has warmed to crypto. That's odd. The CEO is like, I don't like it, but everybody in my company seems to want to do it. So sure. 2021, JP Morgan says investors can make Bitcoin 1% of portfolios. And April 26, JP Morgan may offer actively managed Bitcoin fund report. I think they're even in bigger territory right now. So that is it for today's stories. Hey, not bad. It took uh, 20 minutes. I think we uh, nailed it there. So look, that concludes the news for today's live stream. If you had to take off, give me a thumbs up if you could. That'd be great. Or a thumbs down. I'll try to fix whatever uh, the problem might have been and also to consider subscribing. And now we'll go into the five questions in five minutes. Let's do some Q&A and get the heck out of here, shall we? All right. So Q&A. Oh, man. Mullen Mullet's here. What's up, brother? How's the golf game in Chicago? I know you didn't play golf in Chicago. It's probably super cold. Uh, let's see. Bye, Bitcoin. And every every time I say it's time for the Q&A, there's always like a 30-second delay. So I have to kind of shuffle through the other stuff. Oh, wow. Sniff. Just sold all my gold and going to buy more Bitcoin, Luna, and Avalanche. Precious metals suck. Wow. Look at that. Sniff does it. Well, congratulations, Sniff. You should talk to my brother because he just keeps buying gold like it's going out of style as if he's going to get rich off that. Maybe, I don't know. What do I know? Let's see. Oh, and then everybody's got questions about taxes. Look, taxes are coming up. So just make it simple on yourself. There's a link in the description for CryptoTrader.tax. They just do API integration. So it doesn't matter if it's Coinbase or Kraken or Gemini or even Voyager or Celsius or even uh, DeFi stuff. It actually can integrate with your Ethereum wallet now for Uniswap. And I'll go through everything and tell you what your capital gains, if you own any, and then go from there. So if you believe that uh, the IRS knows that you bought some stuff, maybe you should do your taxes. I can't tell you what to do. Not your dad. Uh, let's see. What's this? What's this? Let's ask Rob. Rob, yes. If you sell one Bitcoin at a 2x, swap it for stable coins. I mean 2x. And pay a coffee with that, you pay tax. So anytime that you, let's say you, you pay the barista in Bitcoin, anytime that you sell or purchase goods or services with your crypto, that is a taxable event. So goods or services, like you can't just take a couple of Bitcoin or a Bitcoin and a half, I guess, and pay for a Tesla, which what people thought it was. They're like, I'm just buying a Tesla with Bitcoin. Shouldn't be any capital gains. Yeah, it is. Because whatever you bought the Bitcoin at, let's say that you bought the Bitcoin at 30,000. And let's just say that you sold, let's say for some reason you get a great deal and you get a Tesla at 40,000 and uh, that's what it appreciated to. So you own capital gains on the $10,000. And depending on when you sold, 
whether that be less than a year, that's your tax bracket, whatever you pay for taxes. Or if it's over a year, it's uh, usually 20% flat, actually 21% after uh, the um, that bill in 2020, I forgot what it was. So hope I answered your question. And again, I'm not a CPA, so check with your CPA. That's as I understand it. Uh, that was number one, yes. What about stable coins? What about stable coins? I will tell you this, my debit card from Voyager is on the way, and guess what I'm going to be doing? I'm going to be taking a ton of my money from my other bank accounts, from my business and things like that. I'm going to put it into Voyager, and I'm going to stick that into USDC. And then when I want to go buy stuff, I'm just going to use that debit card and do it that way because USDC, I get like 10.5%. It's between 9 and 11%. I know that for a fact of how much I get as far as like the APY. It's the easy way to make money. I'm doing a squat. Just put my money in there and then off it goes. And they're supposed to be getting a direct deposit. That would be cool. But eh, I don't work for anybody. I work for myself. So, uh, okay. Faiza. Pfizer Cosby, just want to thank you for your work and honesty. I appreciate it. Thank you. Pfizer from a distance, you kind of look like Simon. Simon Yu from Storm X. Any thoughts on Shane Games? I think. Are you talking about all on Chain Games or Chain Games, the actual project? I think Chain Games, the project, is what allows you to uh, bet, place bets on different, different uh, games out there. I don't know. I think I heard Alex Becker talk about it one time. And uh, who, who knows what it could be? A1 Computer says, Anchor, 19.4. Yeah, that's true. It's pretty good, 20%. <laughs> uh, well, it always, always telling people what's up. Uh, Sonia says, so this was Sonia's issue. Not new, but even Rob sometimes makes condescending remarks or brags about his seven-figure home. I don't brag about the seven-figure home. I say it's a nice house. I don't say it's like the best thing of all time, although it's pretty nice. I remember that. Laughs at certain cryptos. Yes, I do laugh at certain cryptos because they're worthless. And they don't do anything, even though people, knowing full that some of his audience hold those coins. Look, it's not my job to tell you what to hold or not to hold. But I will tell you this. If you're going to come at me, and you're going to say, like, this meme coin is going to uh, be in the top three, I'm going to laugh at you because it's not going to happen. Could it happen? Sure. And could I be wrong? Absolutely. Well, I mean, who knows, right? But uh, that's just how, how I see things, and that's all I can tell you. All right. So, yeah, performance, some salty people. Look, I get it. People are salty. Why wouldn't you be? Like, do you know how pissed off I was in 2018 when the whole market dumped on me? When I was in 2017, everybody told me that Bitcoin was going to a million dollars. I was super ticked off. I was like, and then I, what really make me mad is when I would go on YouTube and I would see all these people like me right now. It's true. They would be like, well, you know, market went down, dollar cost average, and you can just get into and just work hard. I'm like, man, this son, it was, it was really annoying to me. And I can understand where you're coming from. However, now I'm on that other side. And at some point, you're going to be on the other side of where I'm at right now. It sucks right now because when you did all those investments, it was like, hey, I got Dogecoin millionaires and these meme coins and I'm supposed to be a millionaire. I like to talk to a manager. What the hell is going on? And it just didn't, didn't happen. It is one of those things because it's like it's the same thing with investing. You will It takes time. There is no get rich quick schemes. And the ones that do get rich quick, they actually go they go poor quicker. So right now is a time when you have to say to yourself, what am I going to do? Am I in the business of losing money? This is exactly what I told my wife when, when everything went from 2017 highs, 2018 super lows. I'm like, hey, I'm not in the business of losing money. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get some principles. I'm going to buck down. I'm just going to keep dollar cost averaging and buy the whole time. So I was buying Bitcoin at 5,000, 6,000, sometimes four. I would buy Ethereum at 300, $400. I buy Cardano at seven eight cents. You've heard this story about a thousand times, but the, for those of you who haven't, I understand why you're not happy because I wasn't happy either because someone told me I was going to be a millionaire. It didn't happen. It just takes time, and I'm not saying you're going to be a billionaire. Don't quote me. But I think you're in a better place than just the stock market. Just saying. All right. 
That's a good question. Question number three. Uh, 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 Dan, should I worry about staking Soul? No, that's not right. Well, I'll answer your question now. Dan, should I worry about staking Soul on Exodus? Does he use Everstake? I mean, worst case scenario, what happens to my Soul? I don't understand the because like the way that Cardano works as far as staking is very simple and very easy. It never leaves your wallet. It's fantastic, so you can't lose it, right? The worst that could happen is if you stake your Cardano, uh, is that you may not miss a reward. But no one can steal it from you. That's what's great with Solana. I haven't staked my Solana, so I don't know exactly how that works. And as far as Exodus, I haven't heard anything bad about that in quite some time. We'll just say that. So that would be one of those things where you have to do a little more research. And if you don't feel comfortable with it, don't do it. Because what's worse, losing out on the 6 7% of the yield or losing all your, all your Solana? And I'm not saying that you will. I'm just saying that what's worse. That's what you got to think about. All right. <laughs> I've got patience because I'm a doctor. But Is this thing on? Uh, okay. Yeah. Guess what? In like three weeks, oh, you're going to see the indoor pool again. Mm, Louise says, the social media make you do a lot of things that later you're going to regret. And that's why I try to not be so moon boyish. Uh, I did some price prediction videos. I'll probably never do those again. And those were just like, some came out, came true, but the ones that didn't were big busts and bombs. I've been talking about that for like the last six months. So yeah, the thing is, there's a lot of information out there and you can go and do all the things that you want to do and, and take all the classes and do all the TA and do all the trading and things like that. Even Mullet says a smart one. He says, he says, Rob, it's amazing how a short-term trade turns into a long-term hold because some data point wasn't correct and he got stuck. And it's, it's the truth. But as time goes on, like if you pick the, if you look at the, the products that are out there and you say, well, what's the utility? Is it, uh, does it do something unique? Uh, does it actually have function and form? What's the utility? How's the team? Have they done things before? Are they pretty solid? Are they growing? Are they expanding? What's tokenomics? Are they going to dump on me? Or is it uh, pretty good equilibrium and more or less decentralized? Not like finance coins, stuff like that. So you just take a look at that and, uh, you know, make your picks from there. That's how I do it. Can't tell you what to pick. And <laughs> oh. come visit Las Terrenas in Dominican Republic, Crypto Investor Paradise. I have to go there for, for stem cell therapy, actually. That's what I really want to do. And Luis says, what we have to do is become a good team and save the money in Bitcoin. Because just remember, it's very volatile. That's all. Jackal, question number four, Texas meetup. Yeah, I'm going to Houston first, so I'll do a meetup over there. Hopefully, we can get Sheehan out, Chandra Sakara, this is the crypto CPA. He lives in Houston. And uh, since I haven't been back in the States in seven months, I think it'd be a good time to do that. So we'll do one in Houston, and then when I get to El Paso, we'll do a couple in El Paso. <laughs> Robbie should be salty on Cardano. Looks like <laughs> sure someday. Hey, man, I don't know. You'd, you'd like to see it do well. You're, you're hoping it does well, but, uh, you know, who knows? Who knows what's going on behind the scenes, right? I mean, just look at Wolf of Wall Street. Wolf of Wall of Wall Street. That looked like that guy had everything going for him, and then it didn't work out. I think there's a lot of projects out there. I think a lot of projects behind the scenes, they're like uh, they're like swans. You see them above the water; they look cool and calm. Everything's going good, but under the water, they're paddling like crazy, and they're trying to backtrack. That's just how I see it. Uh, what's your alternative? And question number five: What's your alternative to banking? You're looking at it, man. You're looking at Jeffrey. This is it. Uh, crypto digital assets. I mean, what can the banks do that crypto can't do, right? Can't you send money to any anybody in the world pretty quickly and pretty easily, a lot faster, actually? Can't you get a loan uh, for your, I mean, got a loan for this house. 
And uh, over on Celsius, worked out okay. Actually, much faster, much easier, except for the margin calls. And then as far as like storing your 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 cash or your your money or your currency, I mean, can't you do that with with the different exchanges? Can't you do that with, on your cold storage device? So really, if you think about it, like, what can a bank do that crypto and digital assets can't do? And I think it's different, especially if you're like in America as opposed to EU, as opposed to parts of South America and Central America. I think in actuality, the banks lose there because just like that article that we talked about with El Salvador, 60% of the people uh, had a crypto wallet as opposed to only 25% of the people had an actual bank account because they can't even open bank accounts. So I think crypto in the long run wins. That's just me. That's why I'm invested into it. That's why I think it. All right, so that's it. So look, that's uh, 35 minutes. That's that's a uh, solid time frame. So thanks so much for sticking with me. I appreciate it. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. All the things we talk about are time sensitive, but that's it for today. So thanks so much for, for sticking with me and I'll see you on the next one. Adios.